thank you very much for your compliments. Well, we thank God that one is uh, growing wiser and more sublime because age takes away some of the radicalism in the person and it increases your wisdom. Uh, we are grateful to God that having been born in 1950, 2020 is our Sagittarian year. All of us who are born January, between January 1, 1950 and December 31, 1950. So this is our year of becoming Sagittarians. But I will mark, God willing, my 70th birthday exactly on Tuesday, October 27, this year. So one is happy and we pray that God will continue to increase our years, health, wisdom, joy, honor, and contentment. So I'm very happy to be counted among Sagittarians in 2020. So if you look back, um, when you look back at your life, how do, how do you feel at 70, the, the entire 70 years that you spent? Uh, thank you very much. Every child, every man or woman, or every adult, will not be able to capture the first three or four years of his or life, except it is recorded. But from what I've been told repeatedly, before I was born, predictions were made about my birth and my life in more than three places, on my paternal and maternal sides. So, here I am. Uh, your company has been kind enough to also want to interview my mother today, 96 year old, Mama Mokulola Abeje, my mom. So, growing up, it was constantly drawn into my ears my mission or the predictions before I was born. And in particular, my paternal grandmother. Mama Asmawu Odola of a Kenya Jengbe clown, wife of my grandfather, my dear grandfather, Papa Abdul Salam Adigola Alabi, alias Owoniwa, of Uyotunji Olundegun family, Ilioyi, SW2460 Badon, or your state of Nigeria. The predictions were made, and through to the predictions, I came as a male, the first grandchild of my grandmother and my grandfather, the first child of my mother, first child of my dad. My mom is the first of the eight wives my late father, Abraham Oladushu Alabi, had. So it's just following the pattern, following exactly the pattern of the petitions. So it's like reading a script. script. I was so well grown up. At this stage, you will be this. 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 But it's not been smooth running or true because in every cloud there are white cloud, there will be blue or dark patches. But thank God, we surmounted. We surmount and we shall continue to surmount all challenges because we wish nobody evil. Motto, my motto of life is live and let live and that whatever you sow you shall reap so i'm just here like a autopilot just reading the manuscripts and it will just tally with what i've been told that's my life so how did you how did you cope with the early, early years sir? Uh, i know you grew up in Nevada. yes so how did you cope with the early years in terms of the challenges that came your way thank you very much uh, as the firstborn Typically in the Yoruba family and Ibadan family, and uh, anywhere in the world, you are the role model for those coming behind you. So challenges are put in the way of firstborns, male firstborn. Because Yoruba say, Eshiwa Juni they want you to be successful, well mannered, and a good ambassador of the family. So, like all my seniors, predecessors, I went through that as a child, uh, told leadership skills, 
uh, taught leadership skills and with all modesty from the age of eight i have been in leadership positions one class captain seven day adventist primary school primary two to four school may boy 1962 12 years old and in my final year 1963 school senior prefect and all positions that have been falling on my laps so growing up took a lot of lessons sacrifices which in the end are to our own benefit and to the benefit of anybody who submits himself or herself to the real Omoluwa be nurturing the Bible, the Quran, Torah, any religion you are practicing, and self discipline. That has been it. So, what, what role did um, royalty play in all of this? Because from your pedigree, you are not just an ordinary bad person. I mean, you were born into royalty. And did that have any role to play? Thank you. Your... Thank you. When you see a true born in Yoruba land, in the panegyrics, you must hear of crown or honor, Allah. Those are the true born, except those who are going to create a lineage. So in my lineage, both sides, on my paternal side, my great, great, great grandfather, Amola Jajengwe, was one of the founders of this great Ibadan land. And he was a Keri Balogun. Hence the title in our family, when you hear they say Ile Ekeri Ajengwe. I am the fourth traditional chieftaincy holder in my family. My great great ancestor, his son Suberu, his son Sonny Oyelola, and my humble self. And on my maternal side, in Emurekiti, stroke Agwedadudu in Ibadan. My uncle was the third past Elemuri of Emurekiti. So on both sides, you can see royalty, aristocracy, the genuine one. And the ancestors have mentioned the Kenya Jengwe, the fourth in all the wars, in which Ibadan was victorious. My grandfather, Patana Abu Salam Adegwala Labi, alias Owoniwa, was one of the richest cocoa merchants in this town. He belonged to the same club as Adebisi Dikon, and he was among the first set of people to buy Kitka in Yoruba land. And his father, that is my great grandfather, Patana, had horses in our house. Before the entry of British and colonialists, before the influx of motor cars, bicycles, aristocrats owned horses. Horses. So that's my background. Sir, so, um, you've also been somebody that I know that all your life you've been very proud of the fact that you were born in Yafu Ibada. You were born in Ibada. Uh, historically, how does this, I mean, what are the things that um, you like about Ibada that makes you, because any time you talk, you are a repository of his history and uh, everything that comes with it. Thank you very much. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the Hadith, he said, loving your town is one of the, the demands of God Almighty. That is, the citizen must be proud of his or her ancestry, whether you are Scot, Mexican, Arab, Ijo, Yoruba, whatever the tribe. So every citizen must be proud of his or her ancestry, more so if it is noble. From what I've said, nobility, since it runs in our family, you will be taught from age of, as soon as you are able to perceive. This is your lineage on your father's side, this is your lineage on your mother's side, and the onus is on you to either keep the level or raise it. That's the onus. So growing up to hear my ancestry, uh, I am proud and I remain proud to belong to the lineages. So anytime, any day, anywhere, 
Ibadan is number one. It should run in the blood of the Indian to say his uh, country or town is number one. Ditto the Chinese. So as for me, Ibadan is number one. And thank God, I always say this, and we can back it up. Empirical facts. Ibadan is to Nigeria, Africa, and the black race what the United States of America is to the world. The evolution of Ibadan and America, similar, very, very similar. Because war, Ibadan first started as a war camp. So before you could come from all the areas that our ancestors have come to settle here, you must be brave and be sure of yourself. So Ibadan saved Yoruba land from the invasion of the jihadists, the Fulanis, in the 19th century, Ibadan has remained the capital of Western region, later Western state, old Oyo state, now Oyo state. We are waiting for our own state, Ibadan state, which is long overdue. So, coming from such a background, and look at the first, the positive force in Nigeria and Africa, first television, first uh, tallest building, first university, first housing estate, first, first, first. You'll be proud to belong to such a uh, hereditary. So Ibadan is always the first. 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 Sir, so, many people have missed that um, your very um, your lifestyle. Because I know you retired. What I, I would say you retired at a very early age, and you've, um, since then you've kept a very low profile and you've paid attention to culture and tradition. And you've mm -hmm. always been the man at peace with himself. And I'm wondering, how, what, what explains all of this? Because most people are still, um, maybe most people your age or your contemporaries are still out there, um, I mean, doing business or doing something or being politics and all that. But you took your time, you retired at the time you wanted to retire, and since then you've been doing your thing. Thank you very much. A planless life is a useless life. Planless life is a useless life. Everybody must have a plan. Let me use Chief Obafe Melowo as the role model in this example. He, he said at a certain age, he drew a plan for himself, for his life, that at age so, 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 year so, 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 he would do certain things. He would go to school, he would qualify as a lawyer, he would establish his um, chambers, he would do well in politics. Ditto, Adigo Kadilabu, Kwenkelemezi, like all others. So, remember what I said at the beginning? Mm -hmm. One was taught what to do and what one will become. Focused. So, in 19, August 7, 1989, I joined the services of Odua Investment Company Limited as the pioneer public affairs manager. During my orientation, because they used to have a good well-stocked library. I wouldn't know now. I left to do 13 years ago, voluntary retirement. There was a particular American magazine. And in one, the content, one of the contents of that magazine, there was an article that you can fire your boss. You can fire your boss. So I made photocopies of that, and I started reading all over. What the author intended was this that every employee should plan his or her retirement. And he started three cases or instances of retirement. God forbid the first one, he said, people could get fired without notice. Two, people could retire when they reach mandatory retirement age. And third, God forbid that too, people could be out of job due to illness or death. So he is now in that um, article. He now said, for those who want to fire their boss, not actually firing your boss, but throwing in the letter or the towel. He said, one, make sure your children are out of school. Two, you pay the mortgage. Three, you are not in any litigation. Four. Don't pray for any illness that will attract medical or doctor's attention. He said, once you have stated those four points, then you can sit down and say, this is when I am going. So I started. 
following those tips. When our last child, who is 33 years old this year, entered university, I was marking it in my record that, God willing, this young man will graduate in year so, so, so. I'm also going to follow suit out of employment. Thank God we have a home. Uh, I'm not into any litigation. We don't pray for any illness. We try and keep a, a fit life. So, when I gave the immediate past group managing director of Udua Investment Company Limited, Dr. Adeba Ejimo, my former letter of voluntary retirement, he didn't take it at first. Eventually, he took it. What did he do? The following morning, he was supposed to go to Lagos for a meeting with a, an associate company of Odua. He now called me from home. He asked where I was. And I told him, GMD, I'm in the office. I think he was shocked. He thought I would be the typical Nigerian who, having given formal notice, would now take whatever law into his hand. So he said, please, only you wait for me in the office. Then I replied, GMD, but you have a meeting in Lagos. He said, no, don't worry about that. What did he do? He now called two of the executive directors who are in Nigeria. Mr. Iku Molui, executive director uh, operations. Mr. Tayo, executive director of finance. The executive director, company secretary, Mr. Yomi Olanikoku, Dr. Yomi Olanikoku, was on vacation in the U.S. He now called the two. He had briefed them about what I did the following day. So when they now sent for me and I got into the office, the two executive directors turned back and said, Uli, why did you do this? And I said, what did I do? They said, but the GMD said you gave a letter of voluntary time yesterday. I said, yes, you know, I'm a protocol person. My letter should go to the chief executive. It is this morning that I will tell you, my colleagues and others. And I was asked to sit down. Mr. Kumuli was now mandated to ask me what the company should have done that it didn't do because Dr. Jimo had just joined Odua a year ago. And I then let him know that, sir, thank you very much for this honor. When you came in last year, I gave myself one year to retire because I was ready to go when you came. So the month it became one year, I was counting. First week, second week, first month. Ah. Second month, third month, I said, no, it's enough. So, thank you. I don't, the company does not hold me anything. I'm not looking for anything extraordinary. I am ready to go. Although I heard two sent forth parties for me, and many others. So it was well planned and signed by God. And as I said, a planless life is a useless life. People should plan their lives. Because when I gave notice of formal retirement in 2006, I had six more years of service with Udua. I was expected to retire 2012, but I left 2006. And here we are today, as you said. We thank God. We should ascribe it to destiny, two, good planning, and three, the fact that one is contented. I don't run, I don't run after contracts. I don't go after politicians for any obligation or gain. And I'm not being immodest about this. Even when in service, even when I was press secretary to four governors of Old Oyster State, I didn't ask for any personal benefit from any of the four governors. Because I've been told my destiny and my future. And I was working towards it, working hard. So I retired, but Retirement now has afforded me the opportunity to devote more time to my other activities, traditional and cultural, multifunctional speaking, syndicated columns. 